I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell change is you're going to have a task. Wonder why the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to have a nice So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. Because it's Oswald. You following? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PsychOR. Today I will be bringing you a discussion of response deprivation hypothesis and the premac principle, all while doing it from the back of Oswald. Oswald, you say? Oswald, you say? It's Oswald the octopus. Welcome aboard to PsychOR's video today on response deprivation hypothesis. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think I'll take a pause here for a second. Um, oh my gosh, we're getting past. Oh no, I have to avoid this. Ah, no, nope, sorry. Um, back to the uh, lecture at hand. So response deprivation hypothesis, folks, it's really simple. Well, maybe I should go into premac principle first, right? So premac principle, uh, it's, it's easier to show you than it is to explain. So normally you think about reinforcers as stimuli, right? Ah, not in premac's world. Premac is about activity as a reinforcer. Woo! Right? So let me say that again. Let me be a little more clear this time. Activity can actually be a reinforcer. So engaging in a particular behavior, we could chase people around the mall like this. <laughs> I think she's feeling chased. Um, so anyway, we could, uh, uh, so activity can be a reinforcer. So when you're engaging in a response and you want to increase the probability of that response, you can tell someone, hey, guess what? You can go do a fun behavior, a behavior that you've done before, like riding the octopus. I don't ride octopi very often, it's been a while, um, and, and never have I ridden an octopus in a mall before. So, but octopi are really cool, especially when you're in a mall. Um, anyway, so this is actually surprisingly fun and I'm glad we paid money for this because it is highly reinforcing. And the funny thing is, is that because it seems to be reinforcing, I don't know if it really is, but it sure seems to be reinforcing, as a result, if people were to withhold my access to this, so if the rest of the team at Psychor and my family withheld access to this particular reinforcer, you might be able to do something like, hey Ryan, will you go change the oil in your car? And if you do, I will let you ride Oswald the Octopus, right? And, well, wait a minute here, what is that? That is really the response deprivation hypothesis. If you withhold somebody or prevent someone from engaging in a particular response, I'll bet it is. So if you engage or if you withhold or prevent people from engaging in a particular response, um, then uh, you can then use that response as a reinforcer. Oops, look at that, avoidance. <laughs> oh, ah, wait a minute, I think Oswald's dying. Oh. <laughs> He's a little bit not smooth. Um, so that response deprivation hypothesis is a pretty cool tool. It allows you to use the premac principle, so the fact that behavior um, can be a reinforcer, um, in order to strengthen other behaviors. So um, the other way to think of this is talking about low probability behavior, right? So uh, when I was taught the premac principle, I was taught about how access to high probability behavior, you like riding Oswald here, um, can reinforce low probability behavior. So there's a really low probability of me going to the mall and enjoying myself, but access to high probability behavior such as riding Oswald can maybe reinforce going to the mall, right? So the fact that, I mean, we're gonna have to test this out in the future, but it sure seems to be the case, right? Um, and I'm kind of enjoying it, probably more than I should, and I've got a good 15 minutes worth of this guy, um, but I don't know if I'm going to <laughs> engage in all the appropriate behavior that I need to engage in. He's kind of bumpy here. Um, so the other thing that I really wanted to talk about with regard to premac is a bit more serious, and that's the fact that premac was cool, talking about reinforcers and how activity can be a reinforcer, but what's really important that I think people often overlook with premac is that every type of reinforcer really is a behavior. Food isn't a reinforcer until you eat it or you smell it or you feel it or you touch it or you play with it. Money isn't a reinforcer until you spend it or you save it or you do something with it. So with every stimulus that is reinforcing, there's probably a behavior that you had to engage in to make it so. So I think that Premac is drastically underrated in the value that he brings to the field, uh, value that the, the Premac principle brings to the field. Um, not only that, you also have, I mean, really? <laughs> I'm on an octopus recording graduate level lectures. Oh no, oh no, avoidance. Ah, I have to, I want, I want him to continue going. So. I'm gonna engage in the response of putting a coin in, and he's back to moving again. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about enough on 
response deprivation hypothesis. See you, folks. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> What's that? Always I want to do a race. You ready? Go, 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 go. I'm like 200 pounds. How come you can't catch me? Octopi aren't that fast. Maybe they are. You're not catching me. Ah! <laughs> Dogs are fast. That's not a dog. Is that good? <laughs>